Hi, everybody. Welcome back to This is Temporary Podcast. <laughs> I am here with Logan Taylor. He's a friend of mine. He's a creative director, a photographer, a director I have worked with personally. And um, Logan, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, first of all, I'm so excited and honored to be here. When you told me about this, I was like, through the roof. I think what you're doing is so cool and amazing. And I'm just Thank so you. glad to be here, first and foremost. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah, well, I actually worked with you on... Um, my short film that I did several years ago until the yes. end, and you were my star, and you just, i am like you were talking about earlier, we connected on such a level that was just like, instantly, we're like, we know, we feel the other one, you know? I yeah. feel it. <laughs> a genuine understanding yeah. of one another, which 100%. is hard to find, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. So also we found out through the process of filming together that you and I are both uh, bipolar too. Yeah. Yeah. When did you receive your diagnosis? So it's funny because in high school, I dealt with a lot of crazy. And it's funny because until the end was the the short film I wrote. But in high school, I kind of based that off of another little phrase that I had with somebody in high school through it oh. all. You know, through it all was our thing. And so I had this mindset of I had to do this with this person through it all. And I really became emotionally unstable emotionally up and down through this yeah. toxic high school whatever yeah. and um I remember being 17 and going to the doctor and then just being like this is what's going on with you you know yeah. and went to a psychiatrist and got the info got and I'm a firm believer in um healthy medicate like medicating on a healthy level I'm a yeah on it I think medication can really change a person and help them and help them grow in a, in a great way. But um, yeah, it was one of those things where it hit me in the face. And I'm like, okay, am I crazy? Am I like, right. you know, that's the initial thought. I'm like, cause you, I feel like for so many years, the B word was so scary to people, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And it's funny because I'll talk to, I'll see so many um, people, my parents age or my grandparents age. And I'll be like, do you think, they they kind of show those same tendencies and, and people that may be suffering and have suffered their whole life that never acknowledged it. Right. You know, because it's like, I'm yeah. not that. And then they just kind of live with that up and down that pain their whole life. So I think it's a, I think we're going in a great direction. Yeah, I agree. So um, what was your diagnosis process like? Um, it was very, um, I basically just, Went uh, to a counselor for yeah. like six months, sure. um, kind of worked alongside with the counselor and the psychiatrist. I actually had like a emotional break, you know, high school yeah. sucks for everybody, but it yeah. brings you to that forefront of who the hell am I, you know? Right. Um, so it was, it was a lot. I mean, we, like I said, talked a lot with the counselor, talked a lot with the psychiatrist. And it was something that me and my family kind of came to terms with that, um, you know, I'm, you know, depression is a real thing. Depression runs right. in my family. That kind of right. high personality, big energy runs in my family. Right. So I'm like, you know, this, this is something that we, we grow to live with and accept and let build us up instead of kind right. of mentally tear us down. Yeah, absolutely. Did, was yours, so I guess because we are kind of similar in the way that we're big and loud and mm-hmm. bubbly and people kind of know that is our trademark. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So it is a shock to people and ourselves when we do start experiencing those depressions of like, what's wrong? Why Why am I not? I'm normally so happy-go-lucky. Yeah. Um, that was kind of my signal as well to be like, something's not right. <laughs> yeah, well, and for me, I... I always feel like I'm on for people. My friends yeah. will tell you I'm always like entertaining, keeping the energy yeah. going and everything like that. So when people do see me like on a low day or a day yeah. where I'm just not feeling it, it's like, what is his deal? Sure. But, like, sure. But on the other hand, like I've said this before, people will say, oh, that celebrity was hateful. Oh, they blew me off. People who have had celebrity encounters. And I, I'll, right. I think, you know, those people are humans too. So I think we all have to kind of cut people some slack right? and give them that um, liberty and that freedom to say, I'm having a bad day. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what we talk about a lot. Um, 
throughout this podcast and just in mental health discussions is it's okay yeah. to not be okay. Yeah. You know? it is. And, 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 and on, I always couple that with every version of you is acceptable mm-hmm. because that's what I personally struggle with is yeah. that I feel like people want the happy go lucky, you mm-hmm. know, bubbly lacy. So when I'm not her, um, that's another layer of like guilt. Like I'm not yeah. giving. Them that. Yeah. I really struggle with that. So, um, talking about struggles, how, how oh. are you right now? And throughout this whole year, this crazy pandemic and all else. You know what? I have taken this time because I know a lot of people are really struggling mm-hmm. for me. I am looking, I'm kind of spinning the struggle, spinning the downtime and yeah. then going to kind of self meditate and take Good. that and reflect and kind of Good. say well, the universe, God, whatever is preparing us mm-hmm. for something bigger. So this is our resting right. time. This is our learning time. This is our recouping right. time to recharge, get ready and prepare for what's to come. Because I do think, that 2020, I do think the rest of this year is going to have some beautiful things in store. I just think we need to take this all and really focus. No, what? you're right. right. This is, I mean, it's been an uncomfortable year. And, yeah. and, and and change and growth are born out of discomfort. Yeah. So I think you're right. If we allow this year to shape us, it will. And I think it already has, whether yeah. we're aware of it or not. Yeah, um, absolutely. I, I love that perspective. So, so today, how are you doing today? <laughs> today, I am feeling actually really good today. It's kind of cloudy. I'm very much a sunshine person. Yeah, I same. like the cloudy, the rainy kind of fogs me down. But it's a little cloudy. Come out to California. <laughs> yeah, no, I will be there soon. I promise. Um, but it's, it's, I'm feeling good. I have kind of learned to take time every day for mm-hmm. myself just to breathe, whether that's just sitting on my porch, drinking coffee by myself and listening to kind of some music. I take that time for myself to just really go inward and reflect and manifest if I want to. Yes. All the cool things that we have, because our minds, our our souls are so like complex and powerful. And it's, I don't know. I just feel like I, I really am trying to take every day that we have during this crazy time and make it useful. I love that. Whether that's on myself or others. Right. And I think what a lot of people don't realize is self-care and self-love is productive. If you take a whole day, it's like, this is a yeah. day. Oh. You have seven of those days. It's like, yeah. you're being productive, you know, because like you said, you're preparing yourself for what's next for growth. Yeah. Um, I'm a, I know you're like me, we're empaths and I, um, I'm feeding off of your Zen right now. <laughs> Cause I, <laughs> I've been, I've been so anxious. Um, it's funny. I, and I do have, I, growing up before I was even diagnosed with bipolar, I was obviously diagnosed with anxiety disorder. Like at a young age, because I just yeah. would throw up <laughs> just because yeah. I was so anxious. I'd work myself up. I'd get sick. My yeah. mom was like, I can't, <laughs> <laughs> this child yeah. she is sensitive. And, um, I get riled up and, and throughout this time, I actually, I feel like the past couple of years, I've been focusing more on managing my moods, the bipolar right. episodes that come along more mm-hmm. than focusing on managing my anxiety because mm-hmm. it wasn't as prevalent. I'd have more depression than anxiety. And sometimes yeah. those go hand in hand. Yeah. But for me during this pandemic, I've had so many anxiety attacks and um, even a panic attack. Um, and I've learned to manage those better now to know like from hindsight is 2020. I've gotten through it before. I can get through it this time. This is what Mm -hmm. helps. And, um, even last night I just found myself, maybe I was working too much. I like to hyper-focus and I don't know if you do this as well. I think it's a bipolar thing. It's Mm -hmm. common. Um, where, especially when we hit a hypomanic high or a creative Mm -hmm. high, whatever you want to call it, we hyper-focus and it's very hard to tap out. So then you're kind of ignoring your self-care or what you might your body's telling you that you need because you're yeah. so like zoned in. Yeah, so I think I, mean, I did that to myself. It's like that? a restless, antsy feeling. Just oh like, my oh, God. Yeah. So jittery. So yeah. jittery. And, 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 um, I one time talked to my psychiatrist and I was like, is it normal for bipolar people to have like random splurts of light in front of them? And she was like, <laughs> Yeah, no, that's your optic nerve because your brain is working really fast and you need to rest. So your optic nerve is attached to your brain. So she was like, oh. it's firing because you've got like neurons that I guess that are just going, and you need to chill. I was like, 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so I learned after that. I have signals, but I, I try not to let myself get to that point. But yeah. last night I did. And I was like, I just, I, I grabbed a candle and I was just breathing it in. Yeah. <laughs> in. Yeah. Yeah. Essential oils are my go to. Oh like, my God. You're right. You're right. Uh, Hold on. I think I've got a couple of them. Right here. I haven't used them in a while. They're getting dusty. <laughs> yeah, I use those. They I always sniff and feel. I'm gonna use this one today. Yeah, we're using DoTerra right now, guys. Elevate. <laughs> but um, yeah. So I I actually found I don't know if you've ever used any of these apps. I normally try to stay away from the phone, especially when I've been working on the phone. Right. But I needed yesterday something last night, and I. My psychiatrist recommended this and I, I found my own version. It's called Mood Notes. Um, oh. It's a, it's just a mood scanner, mood tracker. Um, I have that in Headspace and those two. I track my mood. I journal about my mood and what I love about it, actually. I'm just sharing this with you because if you don't, do you have something like this? I have Calm. Oh, Calm. Okay, okay nice. But you don't have a mood tracker. No, 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 no. Okay. I think for bipolar people, it's amazing. Not just yeah. bipolar, but but people who struggle with instability. Right. Um, because literally, like, I, I would write, like, bad or okay. Yeah. And then as you journal about it, it'll tell you, you can fill in all these different, I don't know if you can even see this, all these different moods and what percentage of the moods you're feeling. Oh, and then yeah. it, it checks your thoughts. You go into identifying thinking traps like those emotional reasoning, negative filtering, overgeneralizing. And you call mm -hmm. yourself out and you're like, I guess I'm doing that right now. I guess I was using a should statement. And, and yeah. then it like it, it's like a own little therapy thing. Yeah, so, that's amazing. Wow, it's been well, great. And, you know, I think that's another thing that's so exciting. We have kind of changed the narrative and made things a little more like cope with this stuff. And I think it's so beautiful that we have things like these apps. So people... Right who may be in some little podunk town who, you know, who right. doesn't have access to anything like That's that. That's what I'm saying. Can, get, can really self-process because really a therapist is just bouncing your own thoughts off of you. You know, they're just a sounding board. So sure. I think that's, that's really. It's, amazing. it's been so helpful. And a huge part of why we do the podcast as well is that, um, I know I am privileged to be able to go to therapy and to yeah. have access to a psychiatrist, but I feel like it is my um, duty as a human being and as a mental health advocate to then take what I'm learning, and it's not going to be for everyone, but at least put that information out there for other people to have access to like that, you know? And and yeah, like you said, right, the, these right. apps are kind of that as well. It's like you can, I mean, this yeah. is cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT on, on an app for free. Um, right. And it does make a difference if you, if you commit to the healing of it. Um, and, uh, headspace. Yeah. I, I, I like to, so calm, calm's the one that has Matthew McConaughey, right? Like it has voices. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it has Nelly too. Like there's some, like, like, maybe yeah. I, need, I already paid for a year of headspace, but maybe calm, <laughs> calm, will you sponsor us? <laughs> Oh my God. Um, so we obviously we've mentioned met for, um, until the end, your yes. short film. It's like a featurette, right? It's in between yeah. like a short film and a feature. Yeah. Film. Randomly, um, but we love it. I love it. Um, I love it. I remember asking you like what parts, cause I resonated with a lot of my character Lila's, um, mm -hmm experiences what parts did you personally um connect to versus what parts um did you feel necessary just to add the story from your you know experience um, about? you know I definitely go back to that and uh, the, the 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 title until the end because I did have that through it all mindset and going sure. back to that like in high school I mean this person it was well, I'm with you through it all I'm, I'm yeah. here for you we're ne I'm never gonna leave you even right. with like, this is really bad for both of you, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's, it's, that was the one thing that I'm kind of like, you need to give it all to yourself, you know, like I think big relationships, no. healthy <laughs> relationships are wonderful. They are God's gift. But I really, the older I've gotten and the more I've grown, I've really grown mentally a lot over the last few years. And yeah. so I've had a lot of time to reflect back and I'm like, you need to love yourself until the end and get yeah. you a partner that can love you equally. Like it's, yeah. it really is all about self-love because I feel like what you, what you live for yourself, what you put in your body, what you, yeah. you know, the words that you put out, like it all comes back to you. 
It does. You're so yeah. right. I mean, I I can't talk about mental health without talking about self care and self love mm -hmm. um, yeah. because. And people um, forget that. People forget about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they think, okay, well, I got my medicine, so I'm good now. Yeah. And you're like, oh, oh no. You know, yeah. because for most people, especially if you've already been um, living with some type of diagnosis, chances are you've experienced some type of trauma yeah. or, or, or environmental factors that have made life harder for you because right. of your mental health. Right. Um, so there's... I mean, that's just part of being a human is learning to separate yourself from the standards or status quo or whatever people around you are telling you. And those people might be toxic, by the way. Um, yeah. you grow up only knowing that. What well, do you do, you know? It's so funny because for so long, I had so many friends who, looking back, I'm like, those people weren't my friends, you know, because <laughs> I would have my mood or my episode or whatever. Right. And it's like, you're... I would, I'm like, why do I feel crazy? Why are you making me feel like I'm invalid? My feelings are not just, and then you change the thing and you get your, yourself a group of friends who are like, you be you. I'm here for that. I'm here through that. Like that, who you run with has a way of like shaping you. My mom always said, if you lay with dogs, you're going to get fleas. So oh, I, shit. <laughs> Like trying to really surround myself with good people, even people uh, who, and good people doesn't mean like their emotional stability is just off the charts. Like everybody has something, but it's people who uplift us. Yeah. It's people who see the, see the beauty in all of our flaws, see the uh, wonder in our extreme personalities, right? Yes, like, yeah. That's what we, that's what people need to search for. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. I've said it a couple of times on here. One of my favorite phrases is surround yourself with the people who celebrate you, not tolerate you. And I needed to swallow that pill every single day. Yeah. That one comparison is a thief of joy. I love what you said. It reminds me, I did a short episode. I don't even know what this was back in Nashville, but um, with Kelly Pickler, I guess she had a reality show and oh, she goes okay. me, she, I talked to her like at the last second of being in her uber drive or something i'm telling you i don't know what this was <laughs> i asked her i was like do you have like a mantra that you live by because that's kind of how i work she goes it was either your vibe uh attracts your tribe or your tribe reflects your vibe either way it goes either way yeah. um, i can't remember what it was but, but that reminds me of the if you lay with dogs you'll get the flea <laughs> But that's, of course, we're saying, like, dogs. We're not saying, yeah. like, puppy dogs, guys. Right, right. Puppy dogs. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we love puppy dogs. Oh, my God. So what are some, um, do you have, like, coined words or phrases that stick out to you that kind of carry you through your meditations or your life? Uh, yeah, I definitely, you know, I've got I've got my little tattoos that are in there. Yes. This is still a no. This is, like. Um, Did I say so that? Was that in my lines? I think you did. Oh yes. my God, I did. It was after her assault. Yes. Yeah. Yes. She was saying, be still and no, be still and no. So, so what does that mean to you now? Yeah. Well, it's just, you know, I, I hear be still and know that I'm God. I'm one of those people that I have definitely gone through my own spiritual experiences and kind yeah. of like really dive deep into who I am, who I, what I feel around me, but just to always know that God the universe, whatever you want to call it, has always kind of been there to protect me. I know at the end of the day, like, I trust the process. That's something you said for you. You said while we were working on the film, and I've heard you say a million times, and that stuck with me. Like, oh. trust the process. It's the same yeah. thing. Just yeah. That the plan, because I think everything happens for a reason. Like, I believe, yeah. in, I believe in all that me stuff. Me too. Me too. You know, <laughs> I, I can't live any other way. But yeah. You know, I just, I try to really know it is all going to be okay. Right. I try to really, when I get in those moments, pull myself out a little bit and say, Logan Taylor, you have pulled yourself out of this before. Mm -hmm. You came out stronger. That pain that you felt at the time that was, it felt so real. You can't even feel that anymore. Right. You're right. And and the resilience we have learned through getting through our experiences, growing through what we go through, right? But what this would is you temporary. Say, this is temporary. It <laughs> is. And we have to remind and that's obviously why this podcast is named that. But yeah. something um 
we have a large audience, and I'm so grateful for this, of um, people under the age of 18. Um, oh, hey, all you guys. Um, you. <laughs> but it's, um, I remember everything feeling so dire and so immediate and so, mm. impo- you know what I mean? And yeah. even more hard to swallow at that age. What oh, would you yeah. say to anyone? And you work with um, a lot of teenagers on your um, your shows that you direct. Yeah. So what, what, what advice do you have or what, you know, wisdom can you well, share? Well, I always tell my actors, you know, I deal with, like you said, primarily teenagers. So I get to see a lot. First of all, teenagers these days are so much cooler than I ever dreamed of being. You know, I'm like, okay. so much cooler than I ever was. <laughs> but I, it is when you're at that age and when you're, you feel like your world is falling apart. I mean, you really do. I, I look back. And I would just get into it with my mom. And I thought, I thought my world was just ending. And, yeah. you know, I would just say in those moments, take a breath. Imagine yourself in five years in your beautiful world that you're living in, the beautiful life that you create yourself. And just know that it's going to be okay. That's yeah. what, I, it sounds kind of cliche. It sounds like it's, it's okay, but. Honest, honest to God, I would tell any younger person who's struggling with any type of emotional issue, any type of sexuality issue, anything that they're going through that's like, I, I, I can't do it anymore. I'm alone. I'm whatever. Know that this moment, you'll look back on it one day and know why it was like that. You're you'll right. Say, it makes sense why I had yes. that. Yes. We're able. Yeah, we're able to find the lessons and the purpose in the pain. And you know? you can, in, in, in my, I'm 25 now. I've really taken the last few years to reflect on my life and be like, what a, what a, what growth, what yes. growth. It's yeah. exciting to me. Like I really celebrate that to look back at myself at 16 and say, you had so much to learn and grow. And, and it's just, life is a journey. Life is a trip. I just think we should all make the best of it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's been so exciting for me to see, even from afar on your social media. Because isn't it funny how you'll feel like, oh, yeah, I've stayed connected with Logan because I've seen his social media. Oh, yeah. And it's like, yeah. It was like, when was the last time we talked? Like, real talked. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, it's been been evident to me that – like you just look radiant, you know, on your post. Oh I can goodness. tell. No, I'm serious. And um, it and I have friends who will, who know me, who will say the same. Um, or the opposite when they can call me out when I posted something on my story, they're like, "Hey, you're 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 off today, aren't you?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah how'd you know?" And they're like, "I could just see it." It's like, yeah. and they and they they mean it. It's coming from a good place. It's only my safe people who say that. Yeah. But right, right, right. But um. Yeah, so what has that journey been like for you and, and what spurred it? Well, even for me, I, I, you, when we were actually filming until the end, I think that was like 2017. That was like... Yeah, you're right. 2017. And I was, I was at a place that I just... I felt like I was at rock bottom, you know? I yeah. was very unhappy. I, was, I would stay in bed till I had rehearsal yeah. at 6 o'clock at night, yeah. you know? And I think what really jolted me out of that was surrounding first of all surrounding myself with people who loved me for me it wasn't like for so long I was in friendships where it's like me and you are in this friendship because of what we can each get out of it ourselves it's not like unconditional like I'm your friend for you that really honestly made a big difference but I just started self-care I went to the gym I lost 40 pounds I was like, I started eating really clean and green and drinking a ton of water. Sodas are the devil, but I love my Dr. Pepper. I hate it. I'm so bad. But uh, yeah, it was just, it, and, and I kind of opened my mind a little bit for the first yeah. time. It was like all of a sudden it just slapped me in the face and it's like, you've been looking at things all wrong. <laughs> yeah. You know? And so I, I, became more secure in who I was I realized wow you really are important you really are special because I think we we all think I'm just like everybody else or you see people you see people on Instagram or out in LA living their best life and you know people in these small towns think 
I'll never get there. Or I'll mm. never, I can never be at that level. Or they think that that is there. Right. You know exactly. what I mean? Like they, they make exactly. that a standard that they need to get to versus exactly. seeing, you know, exactly. the the magic that's in their own life where they and are. Exactly right. And I think that's I think that's kind of the road I went down like, oh, you're you you are talented. You are enough. You know, mm-hmm. I have another little tattoo here. I don't know if you can see it. it says I am enough. I love that one so much. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was a reminder, like, sweetheart, you're good stuff. Yeah. Like Walk it out. So yes. that's kind of how I feel. Oh my gosh. I love you so much, Logan. I love you. <laughs> I love you so much, sweet girl. And I'm so glad that um that you do work with teens, you know, so that they yeah. get to see your process and who you are because you are such a good role model for them to look to. You know what I mean? Thank you. They yeah. I honestly it's been I feel completely, completely blessed getting it to work with teenagers every day because they they really do keep my mind fresh first of all like I said these kids are hilarious they're just (laughs) so I feel like so much farther advanced than I was at their age you know they Um, keep us sharp (laughs) they keep us sharp you're like yeah I love just from a creative standpoint I love when my actors are like 10 times talent, more talented than I could ever be at whatever. It's like, you know, like at, even at videoing at creative stuff, they play at photography. Like these kids are full of these creative gifts. And I just watch the, this young generation really, really help push us to a new level. Yeah. Cause I, I think I really got this from one of my good friends and it's, it's really resonated with me a lot. I think a lot of people look at kids and teenagers and just kind of tune them out and let them sure. do, you know, they're like, well, they're just kids there. But I think young people have so many good ideas and good, like, thought processes. And oh they're pretty chill. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's yeah. so... But- when when adults um, do tune them out, I think it teaches um, anyone under the age of 18 to think that they can't trust themselves. You know, it, it makes totally. them feel like their their opinions and feelings aren't valid. And I think totally. it's very important to listen to um, our youth, you know, because yeah. I know that if we instill in them, you know, that, that right. importance and validation – they're right. the ones that are going to make a change, you know? It's like, we're the ones leading yeah. the future. Um, I, I, I and, really I feel that way. Yeah. So um, tell me about, well, also this is Pride Month. So happy Pride Month, everybody. Um, <laughs> I love, I love even that Pride is called Pride because yeah. I think Pride can be such a, if you're just looking at the word, it can be such a bad thing. Like yeah. I think about narcissists having pride <laughs> and yeah, I'm like, Ugh. Right. but right. Um, to look at the version that it's like taking power back on the empowerment of being proud Absolutely. of something that people want to, or, or people in opposition would want to make someone feel shame for. I Absolutely. think it's a beautiful way mm-hmm. um to, to, to just refer to the whole queer community because yeah, I mean, what has it been like for you? First of all, being from, from, you're from Tennessee, right? Yeah. Were you, okay. That's what I thought. I didn't know if you were always in that part of Tennessee, yeah, but I, in that part. Yeah. okay. Awesome. So I'm, as you know, from Alabama, but lived in Tennessee and, uh, things are different there for those of you yeah. who don't know <laughs> Yeah, they are. Um, on so many levels. It's the Bible belt. There's, so much religious control. I think mm-hmm. some of it, I hope, is, you know, with good intentions. Um, control is not a good thing, though. No, um, right. and, uh, and and there's definitely a lot of people enforcing their opinions on how they think you should live and what you should mm-hmm. do and how you should. So what what has your sexuality, um, how has that played into uh, your mental health and your life? Well, um First off, for a long time, you grow up kind of with parents who are fearful. You grow up with family members who don't understand. And honestly, I can say that growing up in those situations, you think, I'm going to hell. Oh, I get it. Trust me. You know, (laughs) this this way. But for me personally, my family was like, um, because I'm, I would say I'm more like bisexual. I mean, I like yeah. guys and girls. I definitely yeah. 
have preferences one way or the other, but right. um, it's whenever I finally came out to my family, I was really blessed to have a family that was like, we don't understand this, but we want to. Yeah. Mm-mm. God you know, bless them. yeah. We don't understand, but we want to, and we want we love you unconditionally either way. So it, just the other day, my mom and I were talking, and she said something like, "And you have to understand, my mom, her biggest fear ever was having a gay child." Really? Okay. Yeah. Her biggest fear ever. Mom. Mom. I get it. Yeah. And um, so it was just amazing going from those memories of childhood of her grieving and crying, just kind of feeling that. Oh, sure. My, son, my little boy is, you know, whatever. Yeah. But um, but the other day we were on the phone and she's like, you know, I know all of my kids are Christian. I know all of my kids are going to heaven. They're saved and everything. And that's, to me, was a big deal. Yeah. But then it's like, wow. <laughs> people can grow and change and yeah. people can open their minds because yeah. my family is like, so much more open than they ever were. So it's like, sometimes I wish, I don't mean this in a weird or bad way, <laughs> families that are like so narrow-minded and hateful, sometimes I wish that they would have something come into their life to shape things up. I agree, yeah. Breaks loose some of that because it is uncomfortable. These mm-hmm. are uncomfortable things, but it takes that uncomfortability to grow and um, build something up that's better. But I, I will tell you one story but since we're talking about being in the small town, this yeah. is the only experience as an adult. Now in high school, I got picked on a lot, but mm. I, I've also learned that that is a narrative to change. You like yeah. the picked on vibe in high school. It's like, it's let's, let's change up the narrative. Right. Um, but the, uh, about two years ago here, I was walking out of a gas station here in my, in McMinnville. And this guy goes, Hey, you look like a faggot at the gas pump. And I'm like, and I just keep walking. I'm like, I, I think I just hallucinated that. That wasn't. Yeah, cool. yeah. I get in the car with my friends and they're like, what the hell did he just say to you? And the guy's like, yeah, you're a faggot, you know? And I'm like, I'm like, what? I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, but I took that. And I use that to my advantage to kind of feel sorry for that guy, sure. you know, but, but those, it's not that those thoughts, those thoughts play in the back of your mind. You're like, yeah, what's wrong with you? Are you, you know, this, that, and the other, but I, it's taken me a long time, but I'm finally to a point where I wouldn't have who I am any other way. Right. You know, I don't think I personally believe that you're born with those feelings because I don't my personal preference, I would never choose it. Um, it is, I have grown to accept it and love it. And like I said, I wouldn't change it, but I think that people who grow up and they're stifled in their like creativity. That was one thing my family always gave me. I was never stifled. I always able to grow creatively and grow and which is something a lot of kids don't have. Right. But being different and being kind of ostracized from day one. I mean, I I remember in kindergarten and kids would be like, why do you sound like a girl? And I'm like, not understanding. I'm like, what is going on? You know? Um, So that definitely does kind of shape the ups and downs, feeling like you've got to just perform feeling, you know what I'm saying? And so, but the older I've gotten, the more I've used it to kind of empower me. I've learned to use all my insecurities, my struggles, my things that get me down. And I've learned to change, change the tone, flip the story, Mm -hmm. make it something positive, make it something great. Right. Step out of that, that place or role of victim, you know, because I I agree. It is. And you know what? I, I think we all have our victim moments. I think we all have that, but I think it is important for us to say, to not use that as a crutch for our whole lives. Right. Well, no, you have to be, you have to be the victim at some point to, yeah. in, in order to complete the, the change, the narrative yeah. of transitioning into the, yeah. the victor, you know, the person yeah. in control, the strong, you know, it's like you had to come from that. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I mean, when it's happening, you do sit in it. Um, yeah. And there's, it's absolutely valid with what mm-hmm. you're feeling, but, right. but, um, but staying there is a disservice to ourselves because yeah. you're right. What, what makes us different does kind of 
create our sparkle in a way, you know? It, is. it really does. And um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm grateful. I mentioned this to you before we started uh, recording, but I'm grateful that I've had people like you who are kind of from the same cut as me, you know what I mean? Yeah. In the South right. Right. To, to look to, and, and my, and my dear friend Dallas as well. And like, to see the bravery y'all have in just owning who you are and loving who you are. And it's, it's been interesting because I, I grew up in a family that was very much like we, you know, think being gay is wrong. And, right. um, and, and I was always like, why? And then I also, yeah. my whole life was always attracted to women and having thoughts about women. And so yeah. I was like, oh, I would literally – push it down and, and just be like, that's not there. That doesn't exist. I can't, I would literally repeat in my head. You can't be a lesbian. You can't be a lesbian. Wow. Um, and then I, I, the more I've grown up and the more I've had the freedom living in California this past year to discover myself and my sexuality yeah. and even my sexual relationship with my, so I know people would be like, she's talking about masturbation. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Well, um, I'm saying like it's there's so much shame attached to it when yeah. I think it, if you're growing up in the South in a super religious um, household and, and I never had the freedom or the permission or the mm -hmm. approval, not that you have to have approval, you only need your own right. approval, but right. to, 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 to even go down that path or to discover. So right. that's why it's funny for me. I, I always looked at my friends who are gay and I was like. Uh, good for them. I love them. I know they're amazing. I had nothing. I knew in my heart, nothing wrong with being gay. But for me personally, because I had all these other things, like these other personal struggles of I'm not good enough. I had my traumas. I had um, bipolar. I had all these extra layers that made me mm -hmm. feel like I don't need to slap on another one. I'm just going to keep yeah. that one to myself. Yeah. You know? and, mm -hmm. and, and I do, I have always dated men. Um, but the truth is, and now I'm I'm learning to to love myself in all versions and acknowledge that a part of me is that I'm I'm sexually fluid and yeah. and um I'm with someone now who I love so much and he and I talk about it Zach and I talk about this and and he does accept and love all versions of me and and it's made us feel safer together me being yeah. able to go there because a lot of my trauma is grounded in sexuality yeah um, so, and, and even, even though from the outside, it may not seem like it, you know, mm -hmm. it's stuff that we, there's all those things. I was like, well, I'm so loud about everything else. So maybe people don't even see anything, you know, mm -hmm. but it's like, I, I mean, how, have you worked on and in any form, but trauma healing? I'm sure you have, you're super spiritual, but yeah, <laughs> and I, I mean, love it, yeah. you know what? <laughs> I think a lot of trauma comes from, um, <laughs> Not to get too woo-woo on you, but I think a lot of karma and a lot of our our, our um, DNA and the things that kind of haunt us come from past experiences, whether yeah. it's this lifetime or another. You know, it just, it kind of, we are always, whether it's, you know, I, I play into the past life thing a little bit because I've, you know, you think, oh my gosh, I'm terrified of water. I can't, why can't I get in water? But you have no reason. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, um, I really, those traumas, I think it's so important, even with yourself, even if you go on um, YouTube and type in releasing trauma meditation, anything oh, like that, oh and just lay, lay in the sun or do whatever. And you can go to that place in your mind, really discover what that is, really right. understand what is the root of that. And you right. can, yourself work on releasing that letting that yeah. go because Elsa said it best let it go <laughs> yes. you know, I'm just saying you know I think in order for us to grow and heal and get better and get stronger and learn we have to let it go yeah you're right you know it's funny I I well, back in my condo in Nashville, I couldn't take everything here with me when I moved to California. I just had a small little bedroom to start out with, like at an Airbnb. But um, I had something in my kitchen. I guess it's still there. My brother lives at the condo. And it said, let it go. And it, I didn't even – it wasn't even, like, meant to be Elsa. But I love yeah. that you're like, but Elsa, like, come on. Yeah, man. Hey. Elsa's such a fun, complex character. Like, I want to do an episode where we talk about the mental health of Disney, like, characters. Well, you know, it's so funny. It's so funny you say that because I was watching Princess and the Frog last night on Disney yes, Plus. Taking full advantage of Disney Plus. Yeah. 
even in these even in these kids films and kids shows there's so many messages about like work hard and good things will come be a good person be a gentleman you know I think there are these messages playing that are like you can do it and that's something that I think is important and I think when you're that age you don't really realize but I'll go back and watch these movies that I saw as a kid and I'm like they were trying to tell me something right right they were trying to say do good and good will come to you. Yeah. Be good. Think good and good will come to you. That's another thing I think plays a lot into mental health. Sometimes you just have to flat out trick yourself and say, I'm good. Life is good. I'm putting the positive out there. Today's going to be a great freaking yeah. day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I so do. It- yeah. Well, and- well, it reminds me of um, in the last episode, Jonathan and I were talking about, he was saying you act and become. He goes, yeah. you, you literally convince yourself. You know, make it you make it. yeah, he was like, and sometimes you have to do that just to find the momentum it takes to mm-hmm. get out of a dark episode. Yeah. You know, absolutely. what, absolutely. what do you do? Like, do you struggle more with hypomania with depression or with a mix of the two? I, I haven't, I luckily haven't dealt with any type of manic episode in For several a- years. Okay. Okay. Um, so I've been, m- most of mine is a depression self doubt type of thing. Sure. Yeah. Um, and I will tell you <laughs> going back to what you put in your body really has a lot to do with it. If I drink, if I drink like yeah. more than one night a week, I will feel it, feel it. And be Same. So, down, so depressed. And I, that's, I really have to watch what I drink because mm-hmm. I it will seriously get me so down, which is uh, tough because especially I, I know I lived in Tennessee too. There isn't that much to do. You know what I mean? Like people, wow. people like to party and hang out. Wow. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, especially if it's right. in moderation, but people right. like us, especially because of our, our chemical imbalance and our medication, mm-hmm. it's just not a luxury that we have. And maybe it's a good thing, you know? Well, yeah, you're right. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like to party and have a good time as much as the next person, yeah, but yeah. it is like you, there comes a point where you have to do self-care a lot of sometimes it's a massage or a facial or this that or the other but sometimes it's like you have to do some hard work you have to make sacrifices and hard sacrifices you're right you know you're right that's that's just part of going along with it I think you have to anything you have in this life you have to maintain it right and I think it goes back to a little bit of the underlying message we've been saying in all of this is when you're putting your values and your purpose and your care first, then you're not living for the validation or approval or yeah. whatever of everyone else. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, cause I think what was hard for me for a while was feeling like everyone else was cause I'm fun, sober, obviously we're super hyped, but yeah. I also would be like, I don't want to be left out. And everyone's kind of yeah. like in la la land and yeah, you know, right. and, but you're right. right. Sacrifice is a part of it where it's like, Hey, this is this is the me I have to work with. Yeah. So no point in comparing myself to anyone else when right. this is this is who I have and I'm I'm proud of her. Yeah. You know, and I'm enough. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything else as we wrap up that you want to oh, I don't know what that was. It was a light. Um anything that you wanna, <laughs> I was like something changed <laughs> that you want to leave with us or or any other things kind of on I, your mind on your heart? I did an interview um, a couple years ago for something here in town and they asked me what my favorite quote was. And I heard this quote years and years ago, or I've discovered it years and years ago, and I've really meditated on it and thought a lot about it. Okay. Abraham Lincoln said, whatever you are, be a good one. Ooh. So I have really taken that to heart in my celebration of who I am, my flaws, my mistakes. I am going to be... I have these um, mental health things going on, but I am going to use it for my advantage to create, yeah. to inspire, to tell my story, to share with others, to help others through their own things. Yeah. We can use our mental health struggles and turn them to be productive, mm-hmm. turn them right. to change the world. And I've, I watched a documentary yesterday um, called Crip Camp on Um, Netflix, it was about um, the movement to kind of um, equal rights for handicapped people. And it was just like this, this woman who 
was handicapped and, you know, had her own mental health stuff going on. It was like she stood up for herself, stood in front of Washington, stood in front of the biggest people in government and said, you need to do what's right. You need to own up for it. And I think, you know, we can all use our gifts. We can all use our struggles to change the world, to be productive. I think that's the first step of healing. Change the narrative, change your mindset, focus on the good and be productive. That's, that's, that's all I, you know. Yeah. Speak up for yourself and speak up for the people like you who haven't found their voice yet. Absolutely. Because you speaking will help them find their voice. Absolutely. That's why I'm so glad you did this. This is, (laughs) this is seriously so cool. I can't wait to see where this goes because you are truly, you, I have always known you to be a light. I remember even working with you on our short film and that was uh, the first real thing I did. So I was so excited and so fresh, but I remember watching you really go into a zone, really go into (laughs) a a creative mindset because the role was really hard mentally. It was a lot for you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it was heavy, but Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. I think that you are, you really are going to change the world with your story and you too, though, Log. You know, yeah. you too. I love you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna um cut this off now, guys. Um, Logan, stay on with me. That, guys, thank you so much for joining us. And um, Logan, we love you. Everyone, follow yeah. Logan. Tell us where to find you, real quick. Actually, uh, you can find me on Instagram at Intuitive Logan. And I'm gonna post that below, guys. So be looking for that. All right. Love you, Lacey. <laughs> love you, Logan. Okay, we stopped recording. Yeah! Logan, that was amazing!